One thing the pandemic has done for us is create awareness of some unique terminology, much of which has become part of life. How often have we used the words asymptomatic, variant, N95, social distancing? I mean, before the pandemic, social distancing might have meant putting down your Facebook or your Twitter. Some terminology, at least to normal people like me, can be somewhat confusing. So today we're going to dig into a distinction between two very important words used in the infection prevention world. And to do this, we're pleased to welcome Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, a senior director with GBAC, a division of ISSA. Well, Gavin, welcome to the program. I, I know you help us clear the air and understand how to navigate through the pandemic, especially explaining the science in a way we can understand. Today, you're gonna to talk about the difference between a virus and a bacteria. Are they the same, similar, or very different? Great question, Jeff. Let's face it, we've been talking about viruses for the past, let's call it two pandemic years. And now as we see things change, let's, let's focus more on the viruses, the bacteria, the germs that really can affect us and make us sick. So again, really important to start with, we can't see them. So it's important that they understand they're invisible and we need to make use techniques to make them visible. Now let's start with viruses. Now viruses take over regular living cells. They use them to multiply. They overtake other cells and then they continue to reproduce. Now this process can damage or kill the regular cells. It leads to symptoms, which leads to illness. And that's how they replicate inside cells. Now bacteria. Now the human body is full of bacteria. Some are harmless. Some are even helpful, like, like the bacteria you have in your, in your gut. They're healthy. It, it creates a healthy environment. Now, there are many differences between these viruses and bacteria. Again, where they live, inside and outside cells, what they eat, and probably what's most relevant to us today, Jeff, is how to kill them. And I want to emphasize in recent years, as well as throughout history, um, we've seen some pandemics, we've seen some epidemics, we've seen those caused by viruses, COVID-19, for example, influenza, the flu, smallpox, HIV, even Ebola. And we've had some bacteria epidemics as well. You know, tuberculosis is still spreading throughout the world. As well as we go back to the Middle Ages, think about the, the plague or the, back, or the Black Death. Interesting information. I didn't know some of that. Uh, very good, Gavin. Tell us this. Is one more dangerous than the other? Well, it's very important to understand, Jeff, that for both bacteria and viruses, both can make you sick. Now, one thing that both viruses and bacteria have in common is that they have, again, potential to cause infections. And these infections can be mild, moderate, or severe illness. And again, we talked about some bacteria are bad, like viruses. They can cause illness by replicating quickly in our bodies. They damage or kill the cells or, or even tissue themselves within our bodies. Um, again, if you look at, say, bacteria, many disease-causing bacteria produce toxins, and these are powerful chemicals that damage cells. Again, make, give us the symptoms, make us sick. But it's really important that, Jeff, we focus today on the bacteria diseases, the virus diseases that are vaccine-preventable. We call these the vaccine-preventable diseases. And we've just gone through two years of the pandemic. We know disasters disrupt vaccine schedules. And I wanted to talk to you about, you know, when I had my 12 years in the army, during one of those years, I went to Bosnia in 1996. And in 1996 in Bosnia was the very first time I saw people with tetanus. And you sit there and you watch people die from tetanus, which is a vaccine preventable disease. But it was because their schedule was disrupted. We've gone through two years of pandemic where the schedule, the vaccination schedule has been disrupted. So the big message right now, Jeff, is everyone needs to get back on their vaccination schedule. And to do that, you need to check out the CDC website. That's the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Because many of the viral diseases or infections we're talking about, Jeff, the, the flu, the mumps, the polio, as well as many bacterial infections, pertussis, diphtheria, tetanus, pneumococcal pneumonia, meningococcal diseases, all can be prevented by vaccination. So if you've missed out on your vaccinations in the last two years, now's the time to get back on schedule. I'm glad I don't have to learn how to spell those words or even say them. Nice job with that, Gavin. My last question, what does a cleaning industry need to know about a virus compared to a bacteria? 
Well, very important, both for virus infections as well as bacterial infections, Jeff. Everyone needs to know how to protect yourself from being infected. And you've heard me say this many times, Jeff, you need to cover your holes to prevent infection. That's all your holes, and including your eyes. Your eyes are holes. Let's go back to, to what we call, you know, it's, this is the, so important, the hygiene that we need to, to do, which is super effective in preventing infections. Wash your hands often, at least for 20 seconds. Sing the birthday song twice. Use soap and water. And now if soap and water isn't available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. So regular hand washing helps prevent illnesses because viruses and bacteria can live on our hands. And it's, and we, it's good practice to avoid touching your eye, your nose, your mouth is completely necessary to prevent infection. And especially don't touch those holes if you haven't washed your hands in a while. Now, more importantly for the cleaning industry, Jeff, we wanna kill bacteria and we wanna kill viruses. And it's really important to get rid of these viruses and bacteria that could be in the air or even on surfaces, we have to know how to clean and then disinfect properly. So let's look at the US Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA website, which regulates the chemicals. That's the disinfectants that we use to kill bacteria and viruses. And be sure that we know how to use those chemicals properly, those disinfectants. So really important, Jeff, let's go back and reread the labels if we haven't read them in the last two years. Let's read the labels. Let's get updated information about virus diseases, about bacteria diseases, but more importantly about the disinfectants we use. Look at the dwell time or the wet contact time and re-educate re yourself with the knowledge that's listed on the label as well as on the EPA website. Great information about a virus versus a bacteria. So Gavin, choose two other terms we can dig into next time. Well, Jeff, I think it's important that as we move forward, everyone is saying, well, is it still important to do what we did? And <laughs> yes, I think as we talk about bacteria and viruses, yes, it is more education, more training, but just keeping that, that quality of cleaning and disinfecting in those areas where our risk assessments tell us to do this, Jeff, is so important. Identify those hazards and education and training is going to be, it's continual. It's a continual process and something that here at ISSA, as well as the GBAC team, we focus on every day.